open light burn, use a pen tool to draw a rectangle. You can set the origin point for your design here, align it to the bottom left corner. Move the graphic to the bottom left corner of the canvas, recommended 2 mm away from the edge. Here on the bottom right, you can set the working origin point, set it to absolute coordinates. If you are using wireless control via the web, export the G code and upload it. If you are using a wired collection, click move, move the laser height to the desired position, click set origin, and then click start. Now let me introduce to you the use of Lightburn and Laser GRBL. Here are the official websites where we can download them for free. Then let us take a look at the interface of Lightburn. This is Lightburn's canvas where all your engraving content should be placed. At the top is the menu bar where you can import files and adjust device settings. This row is the toolbar where you can make various adjustments to your engraving content like size, quantity, and position. This column is the drawing tools containing basic shapes and drawing tools for different designs. At the bottom is the layer panel for your engraving content. On the far right is the control panel where you can adjust engraving parameters. In Lightburn, all engravings are organized into layers. Layers can contain different elements such as images or vector objects. Let's do a quick demonstration for better understanding. Firstly, let's draw a square. It's in black, indicating it's on layer 0. Now switch to layer 1 and draw a circle. It's showing in blue, indicating it's on layer 1. You can right-click on layers here and the flashing graphics indicate which layers contain the corresponding elements. The significance of multiple layers is that we can complete multiple tasks in a single engraving job by applying different parameters to different layers. You can merge them into the same layer. That's the concept of layers. Now let's see how we can use this Spider X1 to achieve the engraving we want. Let Bourne suppose both image and vector files inputs. These are the supported image file formats including PNG and JPG. These are the supported vector file formats, including DXF and PDF. Generally, image files are used for engraving, while vector files are used for cutting. The parameter settings for these two are different. We are using default settings for these demonstrations. Let's preview to see how it works. In the case of a weird collection, you need to click on the move. move. Use the directional keys to position the laser height correctly. Then click Set Origin, and finally click Start to commence the job. For awareness collection, you should click Save G-Code, then send the saved G-Code file to the device's TF card via the web interface. After that, you can Control x one through the web interface to start the job.